Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for joining us at our uh, Diversity Week 5 2020. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is our sixth uh, Diversity Week 5. Um, in the past, we have uh, a lot of kind of like um, big events across the whole five, uh, bringing different groups together to, to celebrate the, the diversity and the vibrancy uh, of five. Uh, um, and then this year, uh, we have um, uh, a different kind of program. Uh, like everybody else, we have to go uh, virtual. Uh, so a lot of the program uh, will be bringing to you uh, via mainly our, our Facebook. And, uh, you know, do, do join in because it's quite an interesting and exciting program. And Lisa uh, will be uh, talking about it more um, later on. And so what what we would normally do uh sorry my name <laughs> let me introduce myself first uh before uh, inter uh for me to introduce the rest of the team uh, my name is nina monday i'm the chief executive of five center for equalities and uh, normally on the very first day of diversity week five we will have our annual gathering inviting you uh to share the the kind of uh, the achievements uh, that, uh, we've made over the past year uh, uh, and also to highlight to you um, uh, what would you expect in this current financial year. So, so each member of our team are going to be kind of talking about the kind of their personal highlights and also uh, what they have done to kind of adapt to the new way of working uh, for this, uh, this year, especially in response to the COVID-19. Uh, so for me, uh, the personal achievement is uh, is winning the uh, discrimination case uh, for a young woman. Um, uh, she lost her eye, uh, uh, left eye, as a result of her assault, and later on she was then dismissed by her employer. And uh, I think I'm particularly thankful that we have an organisation such as Five Centre for Equalities who uh, helped her with making an application to an employment tribunal and to represent her and uh, and she also won the case so i think that's also then uh, signaling to um a lot of like five employers that you know uh, discrimination is not acceptable and i think um you know the team is going to be talking about how we have a you know adapting itself at the way that we work um in re to respond to the a daily change being brought about by the COVID-19. So communication is very, very key uh, to Five Centre for Equality. So hence why I'm probably the very first person that I'm going to introduce to you is our Lewis. Hey, hi, I'm Lewis. I was the Information and Communications Assistant, but now I am the Operational Assistant under the new sort of roles. And so if, from last year, I think a personal highlight for me was the EU settlement work as we'd created a whole load of resources, uh, both online and physical, and had some really good conversations with EU citizens in Fife about how they felt about the whole Brexit process and if they're aware of their rights, that kind of thing. So we got some really good insights for the months ahead. Uh, in terms of adapting to COVID, there's been lots of different softwares uh, that we've had to learn and incorporate into our sort of day-to-day -day, uh, running. So it's been quite interesting to learn about them as well as making sure people get the right information, especially when there's things like school closures, uh, funding, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's been a learning experience. <laughs> Okay. And then another key aspect of Five Centre for Equality is engagement. So Pat, do you want to come in? Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Pat. I'm the engagement, no, I'm, I was the engagement officer. I'm now the operations officer uh, for Five Centre for Equalities. And I'm more of the front facing person that gets out and about across Fife or did get out and about across Fife. One of the things I, I'm particularly proud of is the Equality Collective. And that's where communities can come in and have their voice heard and discuss topics that are relevant to them, but also learn about things about how to spot the signs of hate crime, human trafficking, because yeah, traditionally we do a series of events across Fife and information sessions. 
This year, obviously, with COVID, it's been very, very different. So we started a Facebook page that we have a coffee and chat session uh, every Thursday at 11 o'clock. And the themes and the topics can vary depending on the members and what their interests are. What's been kind of unusual is that we've actually expanded our membership because we've created different ways of engaging. Um, and online, we're getting new members and we're encouraging people to keep joining it. Uh, so people have different ways of communicating with us, raising concerns, having discussions and topics. But it will be nice in the future to get out and about to actually see that people are still real and meet quality collective members and do a whole series of events safely, of course. Thank you. And well, we have been supporting organisations to uh, meet their kind of duties under the Equality Act. Uh, so, Eric, you want to talk about your area of work? Yes. Uh, so, well, a lot of the work I've done was directly with organisations. So, uh, that's something that I do think last year was. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really proud of that. Obviously, last year uh, we, we did so much, so much training. Uh, it was really, <laughs> it was noticeable. Uh, I was trying to get numbers, but it's over, over 30 big major training sessions over uh, less than 12 months. So if you think about it, it's like every every month uh, you or you go two or three times out. You pack all your equipment and you go and deliver training. Uh, and we were training private, public, and third sector organizations. I think we were very much on the road just doing this. It was really, really good. I mean, uh, there's so many organizations that learned a lot in terms of air quality and diversity policies. We learned a lot about uh, delivering to them and that's obviously that incorporates the Equality Pathfinders program. So yeah, that was uh, something that I'm definitely super proud from last year. It's something uh, that uh, I think we've learned a lot and obviously with what's happening now, we're adapting to how to do it differently, quite differently online. I can spark on a bit more about that, but maybe uh, would you like me to, to get more into about how we moved online or maybe later? Yeah, yeah, just go ahead and yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, it's we, we're not different there uh, from any organization that had to deal with the lockdown. So, uh, we, we're finding ways of actually delivering the training through this, through live webinar. We're still learning and there's always things that you know, don't work perfect, but we're learning about it. And it's about delivering training online, meeting people in online sessions, um, learning how to write the materials that we used to have as booklets or whatsoever, so that you can complete it as like online assignments. Uh, and then there's going to be, uh, this is a bit looking forward to the next few months, uh, we're going to do a mixture of delivering training like this, which will be completely offline or live, as in uh, like webinars and uh, discussing in person, but also we're going to uh, adapt our training room at uh, in our offices so that actually some people can come in if they'd like to to be there in person at a you know physically good distance so that it is safe but that the training session is actually broadcast as well so that if there's some people who are shielding or would prefer not to to come in person they can still attend the training so we're adapting quite a lot and we're doing uh yeah we're learning loads as a team from doing it Okay, and as the probably viewers can see, we are joined by Nicola this morning, who is actually doing the sign language interpreting for us, because I think it is very important that we um, get our message um, to every group so that everybody is uh, included in all the activities that we, we do. And uh, so, like every organization, back office is very, very important. So, Sarah? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the corporate assistant, um, formerly the administration assistant. Um, and my duties are mainly administration and I try and help the rest of the team if I can. Um, I would say the proudest thing that I've done is actually being able to come in and create a new system for our inquiries that we receive. Um, We've actually now developed it under an air tables, which has made things a lot easier for the staff to record. Um, and it will also be quite good when we come round to gather information for analysis and monitoring and um, it'll make things so much easier. So I'm very happy that it's a lot more smoother. Um, I would say the thing that I've 
learned the most um, through lockdown has been more technology. Um, I have been able to use a computer for this. However, I wasn't, I didn't do much online. Um, so I have, have I basically had to learn a lot more online, um, join Facebook, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's been a big learning curve and I've enjoyed it. Yes, continue on. Uh, uh, as a volunteer organisation, we heavily relied on a volunteer. So next I'm going to introduce two volunteers to you. So first one, Lisa. Hi, my name's Lisa. Um, I was a, I'm an operations assistant, but from July last year, I was a I came in as a volunteer. Um, I basically helped work with the team on the different path study that was created that was aimed at people that were over the age of fifty five within the five area that lived or worked here. Um, it was to learn about their experiences and how and how it affected them by connection through protected characteristics. Um, and it also helped during the study to see the experiences that these people went through and compare it to people to people that were going through certain experiences maybe now and seeing the differences between each, between the ages and everything. Um, I feel like um, going online, uh, being online and being at home now has been weird, uh, I would have to say, because um, I've had to learn uh, so many new things about adapting to online, because to me, I would only use social media and that was it. <laughs> So doing all this kind of stuff is very new to me, but I have to say working with the team and learning all these new things and it's gave me more confidence in my work, my work sort of experience now. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eilish, in one of our newest recruits. Hi, I'm Eilish. I'm the newest volunteer. And at the moment, I'm working on a project where I'm looking into the financial resources that are available to young people, to basically all groups across society. Um, and what I'm hoping to find out is who benefits most from that help and also who might be disadvantaged by it, just so that we can look at how that relates back to equality generally. And so far, there's a lot of information, but I am enjoying it. Okay, thank you. So in response to COVID, we have created quite a number of like new projects or, or delivering uh, some of our existing uh, projects differently. So one, one of the latest projects is our older people uh, project, minority ethnic older people project. Uh, so this morning we are joined by uh, two out of three uh, workers. So uh, can I bring you in, Ruby? Hi, my name is Sis Ruby and I am an operational assistant. I joined Five Centre for Equalities in August this year, when I when the centre is recruiting bilingual workers uh, for the Old People Project. This project is to support ethnic minority 60 and over people whose facing language disadvantage and the digital disadvantage. This project is a six months project and we support ethnic minority groups, access services such as health, social care, housing, food bank, and through this project, we provide a valuable insight for organizations and service providers to assist in reducing the barrier ethnic minority older people face. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sarah, anything you want to add? Hi everyone, it's Saira and, uh, and I am an operational assistant in uh, Ethnic Minority Older People Project. Uh, as Ruby explained, this project started in August and I joined this team in August as well, so I'm fairly new. 
Uh, our, uh, one of our aim is to help and connect the community in uh, the area of five and help them and provide them the facilities they're looking for. Also, there's a language barrier and uh, I'm able to speak Urdu and Punjabi. This is something I can help you who can't speak English and I'm here to help in three languages. Whatever language you are comfortable with, I'm happy to help. Also, we are uh, offering a variety of things such as a food pack. We are also offering a voucher for a friend. It's for the Equality Collective uh, uh, members. Anybody can uh, uh, apply for this voucher as long as they are a member of um, Equality Collective and they can enjoy this uh, £20 voucher and take their friend out with them and uh, enjoy their time together because it's because of the COVID they've been inside and I know it's been hard for everybody for us as well but it would be a good opportunity for anyone who would like to go and have a fresh air with their friend and uh, here's a 20 pound for you so thank you okay providing that you're spending that in five <laughs> <laughs> um, Pat do you want to introduce the third uh, team member of the Older People's Project. Yeah, um, Damien sends his apologies. Um, he's the third team member uh, of the multilingual team. However, we also need to say that if we don't have a language covered within the team, who are a very talented team that we can support with the other interpreters too. Uh, Damien joined us. He, I think he was the first member of the team to join us. So he got landed with putting a lot of structural stuff in as well. Um, but if you just want to get support and assistance, just contact info at centreforqualities.org.uk and one of the team will get back to you. Okay. Well, as well as like uh, older people uh, project and, and Pat already mentioned about uh, Equality Collective. Sarah, about, do you want to talk about how you've been supporting the Five Women's Tent? Yes. Um, Five Women's Tent actually was a group that went online on the 23rd of March, it was basically just a group that was aimed to support and just be there for women of all um, backgrounds, ethnically minority um, and marginalised women. Um, it's became very popular. Um, we have over 400 members now. Um, we found that the women seem to reach out and chat to each other and support each other. Um, we've also had performers um, have a live music session most Fridays. Um, and we've also had exercise classes, yoga, storytelling. Um, so it's been very good, lots of competitions. So it's very, very popular and very busy all the time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I believe the uh, members of the Five Women's Tent can also qualify for the uh, Go Out With Friends scheme that yes. we're running for September. Yeah, I think there's actually groups that are already making arrangements to meet up as well, which is bringing them together as well. So it's very, very good. They're all getting to meet people that they've never met and only spoken to on the group. So, yeah, okay. good. Okay. Anything anybody want you to add in terms of like kind of how we responding to the new normal? I Please feel free to unmute yourself <laughs> when you want to speak. It's a bit slow, sorry. I think we're learning how to, to use webinars way better than before. And it's got some, you know, hiccups. It doesn't work all the time. We have to take some uh, retakes of a few things, uh -uh, but uh, I think we're getting there. <laughs> okay. And I believe, Lewis, you've been uh, adapting a website as well. Yeah, I've done a little bit of a website refresh in the last sort of month or so, just not only so it looks better, but so it's a bit more accessible for people as well. Uh, it would also be good to make it a bit more interactive. So this is sort of an invite to anyone if they want to contribute any blogs, any personal reflective pieces, that kind of thing. It would be great to feature that on a sort of new look website. So, yeah. Can I add a bit about the Different Paths project that Lisa was talking about? And it's about people's life experience and all the things that in their life due to protected characteristics help shape their journey through life. And as Lewis said about the blogs and stuff, we have a series of videos on there. Uh, well worth a watch and you'll find that some things haven't changed for people 
but also some things I have, and there's some great advice in there from different groups. So we'll continue to build the videos as we get, because we just had two um, guys, Andrew and Lee, helping us edit the videos, but we are still looking for some more digital media editing to actually enhance this library of, and it's a resource for anybody to use. So reinforcing what Lou says that, one, we need more volunteers, and two, when we need more personal stories about challenges people faced and how they've overcome them, and where FCE can come into that as well. Thank you very much. I think, well, we're coming back to you, Lisa, because oh. you've been working very hard. <laughs> you, well, you, because you have been working very hard over the past two months uh, to bring this like, program together. So do you want to tell everybody what um, they've got to look forward to this week? Yeah, that's no problem. Um, Diversity Week 2020 is a uh, it's going as you can see now it's online um there will be acts that have been on our five women's ten and also on our diversity week five page over the last few months that have came back to help us uh, do some more for the week and everything and some regulars that have uh, been part of diversity week in the past um we're going to have segments from tomorrow called Let's Chat, and it will be with different uh, organisations that have started up because of uh, COVID-19. And these people, these people and organisations have started because they felt there was an extra need for them to help people within their local area and it, how, to see how they've grown and how the how much help and help that is still needed for their community. We've also got uh, organisations that have uh, been established over the years and um, seen what extra services and help they've helped provide as well. So we have got people from community pantries. We've got uh, people that have looked at. Uh, the environment, such as our little litter picker brigade that's going to be on during the week. Um, and even like our education side of it, the college, and how they've helped within their own sort of community across Fife, and even students that are out with Fife, helping them to make sure that they were still connected to get their education fit to come along this week and you know join in you know and you can ask questions to the groups you know if you want more information or you know you might want to help them you know after hearing their stories so please come along and join in thank you very much so i think um yeah i, I mean we only can manage to fit in a, a, a small number of groups uh, uh, for the for the program but I, I think I mean in five uh, every single voluntary organization or public sector service has responded to the COVID uh, amazingly and uh, so there's been a lot of people out there supporting each other and uh, so what we're highlighting this week is only just like a uh, a small glimpse of the effort that every single organization has made uh, to support people in five and um uh, so do do go do kind of maybe um uh, read more stories about uh, different voluntary organizations so if um if anybody that wanting to share their story with us uh who's not part of the program by all means just use the diversity week five uh, this week to to promote the work that you have done and like i said i think everybody has done uh, brilliantly and i know that my team has certainly has worked really really hard um I know that it's not just since I, I can't say it's just since March. I think they've been they've been working very hard ever since whatever date that they started. 
<laughs> if you can remember your start date. Um, I think so, some, some of us have been uh, with the organization uh, for uh, more than five years now. So, we, um, I mean, if I for one certainly is definitely um, uh, showing the age. Um, but uh, well, I, I thank you very much for uh, watching us, and uh, I do hope that you will continue to not just engage with us through this week, uh, uh, but then also beyond this week, and continue to support our work. And uh, I think uh, any advice that you want to give us, any suggestions that you want to make, by all means, just uh, share with us. We are available um, on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Lewis, uh, through your website. I mean, there's, um, you know, if you have any concerns, and I mean, we continue to support individuals as well through casework. Um, so do do engage do engage with us and chat to us. And uh, so uh, I'm glad that you got to meet uh, our team and uh, and uh, come and say hello anytime. Uh, probably not in the office just now, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, Virtually, anywhere, uh, call us, uh, email us, uh, and we will let you know. Uh, we will let, definitely let you know as soon as uh, as soon as our office is open uh, to the public again. Uh, but um, thank you, thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>